Shalom. I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bakar, Kadar, respect and honor to your elders and apostles that are out there preaching, that taught us this word, and that's preaching this gospel of truth. This is another episode of Glad Titus Ministry, and this is Prince Shammai Basar. And today I want to go over laws of liberty. Okay. Yeah. Laws of liberty. So let's put that there. Laws of liberty. Liberty. Okay. And let's just get it clear. So, the reason why I picked this topic is because so many people have a thing, have a um, a hatred for this Bible, right? And they haven't even tried it to use any of these principles and require it in their life. So for example, let's say if you're sick, right? The doctor tell you to take some kind of herbs, right? And the herbs that you take, right? Requires that you try the herbs, you accept it, you listen to it, and you apply the herbs to your diet or what the things that you eat it, and you cut out the things that's making you sick, right? And then all of a sudden you heal. Well, that's the same thing with this life, according to the Bible. Okay? These requirements are healing mechanisms for you to navigate through this world because we always know we all know that the hands the, <clears throat> the world is given into the hand of the wicked and the Lord is just testing out individuals to see if they're about that life and a lot of people is not about that life yeah um if you haven't tried it how could you say it's not good for you now, to me, that is a foolish man's statement. That man would have to be very unwise because how could he say something he never tried? How are you going to say, you know how people say, yo, I don't like that, but they never tried it. Then when you tried it and you'd be like, damn, I ain't know this, this was that good. And then you start requiring a taste for it. That's what this Bible is. That's what this Bible is about. So, it is the laws of liberty. Okay? The laws of liberty. Liberty. The laws of liberty. Yeah? And that's what this is about. So... I want to give you some information. Okay, the first thing that we're going to read is out of this. It's on page, what page? 583, and this is out of the Dictionary of the Bible, Revive Edition, Grant and Rowling. Okay. And it says... Let me make sure this is true. All right. Okay, so it says, in the Bible, human freedom is contrasted, not with necessity, but with bondage, laws of liberty, right? 
Only beings who are by nature free can suffer bondage. Animals cannot become animals cannot become slaves. Possessing the innate capacity of freedom, men may fall into physical serfdom or more subtly into spiritual servitude. The latter or bondage unto sin. Men try to order, now here is the point. Men try to order their lives without reference to the most high laws of liberty. Men try to order their lives without reference to the most high. They transfer their trust to some false God, which having demanded their freedom as a collateral promptly forecloses. Whatever potential freedom they retain is like that of a man in prison. It only increases their frustration. This is you niggas that's without the most high. This is you niggas that said it's the white man's Bible. He wrote the Bible. This is the, the niggas that say that this word is not true. This is the niggas that say that there is no most high. These are the niggas that die early because they live life without rules. And the rules are not burdened. What do Yahweh shall say? Throw your burden on me. So these laws of liberty, laws of principle, laws of freedom will set you free. Because it is the truth. These laws are the truth and the truth will set you free. And it says whatever potential freedom they retain is like that of a man in prison. That's why niggas is bugging out today in year 2024. Year 2024 is bug out, danger. You see that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You see that the, the cool, the, their wax, their love for the most high has died off. It's not there. We have a society with no laws of liberty, which is the, which is the commandments. The commandments are the laws of liberty. And they're good. They're refreshing water. But you want to drink dirty water. Water with doo doo and pee pee in it. Right? This is whatever potential freedom that retain is like that of a man in a prison. It only increases their frustration. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were in bondage to being to beings that by nature are no gods. Victims of these false gods, victims of these men that don't have Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, our people, which is our brother, the nation of Israel, that's why they're in a lower state. Victim of these false gods become in turn a part of the conspiracy against human freedom. They are likened to hucksters. If you look up the word a huckster, if you don't know what that means, a huckster is especially one who sells or advertises something in an aggressive, dishonest, or annoying way. And that's how the preachers been coming. These fake preachers are becoming hucksters. So now we have a man, a, a, a world full of hucksters, H-U-C-K-S-T-E-R, hucksters. And it says, especially one who sells or advertise something in an aggressive or aggressive or dishonest or annoying way. So you got the pastors that have been coming up to Ponzi schemes, taking the people money. They're becoming hucksters. Okay. Then it says, it says, they are likened to hucksters who promise freedom, but are themselves slaves of corruption.
where false gods enslave men, the mark of the true Most High is to liberate. Is to liberate. But how could you say that when you haven't tried it? How could you say that these words of the Most High is disgusting and you haven't applied it in your life? Those are foolish men you have to stay away from. How are you going to talk about a place or a continent you never visited? You never seen it. How are you going to talk about someone you never even met? That's why the scriptures say to try the spirit by the spirit. Victims of these false gods become in turn part of the conspiracy against human freedom. They are likened to hucksters who promise freedom but are themselves slaves of corruption. Where false gods enslave men, the mark of the true God, the Most High, Yahweh, is to liberate. The Lord delivered his the Lord delivered his people out of the house of bondage, not only physically, but spiritually as well, but inviting Israel to walk in his ways, the ways of the Lord. The ways of the Lord are the law of liberty. The ways of the Lord are the laws of liberty. The ways of the Lord are the laws of liberty. Okay. So. Let's go to some scriptures. The ways of the laws are the laws of liberty. That's some beautiful words. The ways of the Lord are the laws of liberty. The ways of the Lord are the laws of liberty. Let's start with Deuteronomy 30. First, I'm going to go, um, maybe we could do parallel, okay, and King James, and, no, King James, and New Testament, no, 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 let's go to this, Okay. There we go. So let's go to Deuteronomy, right? 30. Deuteronomy 30. We're going to start at 15. See, I have set before this is the King James Version on the left side. If you look on the top and the LTD, the NLT on the, um, the King James Version on the left side and the NLT is on the right side. Just for edification if you want to compare translations. It says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. All right. Let's go to the, the NLT. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. Well, looking at these scriptures, our people did not take in the laws of liberty because our people are in the negative. They are in, they are in disaster. What does it say in the NLT? Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. But you say this is a white man book. Let's read on. And that I am command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that they may live and multiply. And the, the and and the Lord in the, the and the Lord thy power shall bless thee in the land where thou goes to possess it. Go to the what's we call it to the NLT. For I command you this day to love the Lord your power and to keep his commands. 
decrees and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, if you do this, you will live and multiply and the Lord, your power will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. All right. Verse 17, but if thy heart turn away, but if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, what are people doing? They're serving baptism. They're serving Pentecost. They're serving Lutherists. They're serving Jehovah's Witnesses. They're serving all these denominations. And what does it say in Jeremiah? The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. They're saying, come over here. My church got the truth. Come over here. No, the Muslims got the truth. Come over here. Um, Catholic got the truth. Come over here. Seventh day of Venice got the truth. The truth is only one religion, one power. When you go contrary to the most high, to the nation of Israel, you are serving other gods, other denominations. That's the trick bag. That's to keep you in a lower state. You have rules and regulations and principles to guide in your life. It's up to you. You could take it or not. But if you don't take it and accept it and embrace it, your life is in turmoil and disaster. The gods of the nations are the 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 the, the, the um. The gods of the nations are snares to the nation of Israel. That's in the scriptures too. All right. And it says, turns away and you refuse to listen. What is to listen to what? These commandments. These com You ever went through the, the commandments? They are beneficial. They are cleansed. They are wholesome. They're telling you the reason why. One of the reasons is pork. The Lord told you certain reasons why not to eat pork, but you still decided to eat it. Then you wonder why if you're sick. Then you wonder why this. You wonder why that. Or you would say, I'm going to die for something. That's what a nigga would say. And when I say nigga, I don't mean bad putting down our people. I say nigga is a way of, a, of stating an ignorant term. Someone that's dealing with ignorance. They're stuck. In the mind, they got a rep. A nigga is a reprobate, has a reprobate mind. He has a warp thinking. He has a warp thinking. That's what I mean when I say, look, look, them niggas is bugging out. They have a warp way of thinking. They have a warp way of looking at things. And the reason why they mind is a warp is because they don't got the law, statute, and commandments. We are reading that. But the first thing, the first thing a reprobate mind would say, that's the word man's Bible. But if your heart turns away, 17, and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will be certainly be destroyed. Look at our people in the lower state. You ever thought about why you, why our people, the nation of Israel, are the most people on the planet Earth being oppressed and stressed more than any other nation? And don't tell me that other nations are being stressed out like that too, because they're not being stressed out like us. They're going through some things, but they ain't going through something like us. So don't give me that. They have a different type of... Um, lower state on them than any than any other nationality think about it think about it then i warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed you will not live look at this read it again from the top 18 then I warn you not that you will certainly be destroyed. Read that again. I messed that up. Then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing, the Jordan, 
to occupy. That's standing in for today. Remember, it was the future. They was telling, um, it was said, we would say, come to nation of Israel. Let me gather, gather yourself together. So let me show you the future that will be for you. When it says Judah will be a nation, well, it would, and, and when it breaks that down, you can read that for yourself. But that was the future prophecy that we would later on, later on in the latter days, that what would happen to the nation of Israel. All right, we're going to stop at 20. Today, at verse 19, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness. The choice you make, it's on you. So when you see an, an ignorant, reprobate mind of our people down, they chose to hate the Lord. They chose to go against the Lord. They chose to live outside of the Lord's, the Lord, Lord's statute and principle. They out, they did, they did, they did not take heed to the laws of liberty. They frowned upon it. So the Lord gave them up into dense darkness. That's in the scriptures too. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants, even your kids are going to be affected by this. So, and you don't even, most of our kids don't even make it. They've been dying um, as younger age. Okay. The older generation living longer than the, than the new generation. The, the so-called black man in America, he ain't no, sometimes he ain't even living past 18. Stuck in the ghettos, the projects. All around the world, not just in one place. Louisiana, niggas in the ghetto. Brooklyn, niggas in the ghetto. Mississippi, niggas in the ghetto. Cleveland, Ohio, niggas in the ghetto. Bunched up, killing each other. That ain't all the white man. The white man's just executing out his order. That is the Lord putting curses on you. Because you are stiff-necked, ignorant, reprobate people. This is the truth. The laws of the principles is the truth. It will set you free. But you niggas don't want freedom. You want bondage. So that you and your descendants might live. It's affecting your kids. This is the last verse. You can make this choice. By the loving the Lord, your power, loving the Lord by obeying his commandments, keeping the commandments, teaching them commandments and teaching your kids and faith. Because when I say the commandments, I don't say this is because you have people that say that's old way. That's just the grace for you. to. That's just the license for you to sin. And we're going to touch on that later. Lord, your power, obey, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. 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 And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Who are you talking to the world? No, it's specific to a specific group of people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the children of Yasha Allah, the children of Israel. Now, let's go to Isaiah 61 and 1. I don't know what that is. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Who are bound? Our people is physically bound and the most people incarcerated in a prison and damn sure spiritually bound because you spiritually bound when you don't know Yahweh Shem Yahweh which comes with the laws of liberty. 
which is a commandment. When I say the laws of liberty, the laws of liberty are your commandments. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. Who are the brokenhearted? You're growing up a house without your father. You're growing up in a house without your mother. Your father's probably on dope. Your mother's probably on dope. Your father's doing life in jail. Your brother, did you, your, your little brother, is he, go, he going up north too. He about to do life. The kids is raising up in a group home, in a group home in foster care, in and out of the government system, and they're getting paid for it. They're getting big bucks off of you reprobate niggas. Big bucks. This is big business. Putting out drugs in your community to kill you. And this is part of the rat race in the system. And the Lord is allowing it because you niggas are stiff neck people. And we mourn. We don't have enough for, for um, health benefits. Damn, we have to eat the most, the, the, the worst food because we can't afford it. Snap don't even last you for the whole month. You you starving and then ladder in the month. Why wow, we I've been on it before. I'm not talking about it's, it's something I haven't lived. I lived this. So it got so bad, man. I started stealing my mama my mama food stamps in the, when I was young because I didn't know if at the end of the month I wasn't going to eat. So when I when when she would get the food stamps in the beginning of the month, right, and she would send me to the store, I would. Because back, I'm talking about when you had the the, the packages, the dollar, the ten dollar bills, and it comes in the booklets, and I would rip out them booklets and put them in a, and stash them and hide them for a day that I can eat, because I know at one time down the line in the month it, it probably ain't, we ain't gonna eat nothing, and I was gonna probably damn near starve. And this is a lot of us trapped in the hood. We don't stick together. And, 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 and what's so beautiful about the laws of liberty, the laws of liberty brings family together and let the brother know how to respect the father and the mother. The father and the mother loves the brothers and sisters. The brothers and sisters love each other. Then you know what? They meet the other friends that's of the nation of Israel, only our people, and learn how to deal with each other and help each other and have respect for each other. These would consists of the laws of liberty. Read it again. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. The laws of liberty is part of the gospel, which is part of faith. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And this is the whole duty of man. Say it again. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. This is the whole duty of man. What is whole duty of man, woman? And child, to serve their creator. There's nothing else here. Once you embrace and accept that there's a creator, a higher being than yourself. And you really love him. And you look up these words. These are the words that I manifest. I manifest. These are the words that I manifest. I manifest. Now you got P. Diddy guys out here, homosexual. This, yo, this internet then got so, so, uh, so gross, so defiled, so nasty. They had a, 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 a skit that they say that P. Diddy was humping a man and you hear the effects of a man going into another man's rear end. Um, Make a noise. This is what we've came to. Men don't even want a woman no more. They want another man's ass. That's the desire that they have. But the world says that that's a normal way of thinking. Yo, hey, that's free will. Yo, he could do that. And it's twisted. It's a sickness. You know, years ago, they had a medical book that they would say that if you was homosexual, that you had um, you had a sickness with you. 
And then later down the line, they took that out. If I could find that butt, I would share it with you. That they, even the people knew that that homosexuality, if a person was feeling that way and they was living that way, they had a sickness with them. During the medical um, records, they put that down as a, um, as a sickness. So now we have the world condoning pedophile trafficking, homosexuality, bestiality, killings on an all-time high, overdosing of drugs, no respect for the regular law. Regular law is the law outside of the real laws, which is the laws of liberty, which is the commandments. This shit is crazy out here, man. And it's about to get crazier. What sets you apart in your household and in your inner spirit from other people? Because the other people, I, I usually call it, they getting bit by rabies. That that nigga got bit. Because he takes on the doctrine of this world, the rudiments of this world. And Christ, who you ignorantly call Christ, Yahweh said, don't take that. Don't be live in the world, but don't be part of the world. What do you think he mean by that? Because he know that it was going to be an over, over um, indulging of um, bringing out social media of all these cool things, even in the songs. This is Sodom and Gomorrah all over. And Sodom and Gomorrah was not um, a make-believe place like, like a cartoon. That was a real event that happened. I want y'all to know that. These people in the Bible are not false people or animation people. These are real persons in this Bible, and these are real events that happen. This ain't a mysteria, because I be thinking that maybe sometimes you probably, people don't believe, our, our people don't believe, I don't give a damn about the nation, but our people don't believe is because they don't believe that these are real people and real events that took place in the Bible. They think the Bible is like a fairy tale book. And maybe that's why they're being grabbed. And then you have to understand the devil knows some of these. He, he took some of the, the things and tried to manipulate the book to control the minds of the people. And maybe that's why back in the days, you, it was against the law for you to read. But the Lord didn't open up the seal for your mind for you to, to attain this shit. Now this is being pushed all over the world. And then the scripture said, then the end shall come. When this gospel of truth be pushed in the four corners of the earth, then the end shall come. That means our, say, our salvation, Yahweh Shai will be coming here. Rumors, not rumors now, wars are taking place. And things are heating up. Gross appetite of sexuality are heating up. Where do you think this world is heading? Where do you think we heading? And you niggas are playing around. You act like you don't see what's going on. Yeah, you don't see what's going on because you don't have the laws of liberty. The laws of liberty keeps you free. Read it again. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn. Who's not mourning? That the time of the Lord's favor has come. Yeah, that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And with it, the day of the most high anger against their enemies. What are you talking about here, man? Let's go to James one twenty-five. James 1, 25. But whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, 
he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Read it again. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then the Most High will bless you for doing it. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go to Psalms. Laws of Liberty, man. Let's go to Psalms 119.45. Psalms 119, 45. 45. And it says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Precepts, I'm sorry. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. See that? I will speak to kings about your laws, and I will not be ashamed. How I delight in your commands, how I love them. I honor and love your commands. I meditate on your decrees. Zion, remember your promise to me. It is my only hope. Your promises revives me. It comforts me in all my troubles. Indeed it does. All right, 2 Corinthians 3 and 1. Second Corinthians 3 and 1. Do we begin to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, apostles of command, commendations to you or letters of commendations for you? Oh, I made a mistake on that one. Oh, my bad. Let's go to James 2 and 10. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. James 2 and 10. James 2. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay? For the person who keeps all the laws except one is guilty as per as, as a person who has broken all of the Most High's laws. Okay, let's go to Romans 3.31. Romans 3.31. When, well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean, yeah, this is my part, because this is what they all love to do, the Christians. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Read it again. Well then, this is in Romans, okay? And Romans was, um, who wrote this chapter? It was poor and these were to Israelites in Rome, right? So let's read on. So don't think that the Romans was another nationality. The Romans was Israelites that was Roman citizens that probably took on the customs of the Romans, okay? So well then, that's when you go back to Hellenized Jews or, you know, well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Or of course not. In fact, only when only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Oh my Lord. Knock out. Read it again. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean because they say we under grace right now? So that means if you're under grace, you could go stab a nigga, you could steal a nigga, you could commit adultery now, and then you could just run to the most high or to your high and say, Lord, forgive me, and then you forgive. And then you could do it again and again and again. Nah, that's not a license for sin. 
Read it again, 31, Romans 3.31. Well then, if we emphasize faith as an NLT, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. That's beautiful. All right, let's go to Romans 10 and 4 now. Romans 10 and 4. For, I'm reading verbatim Christ. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with the Most High. See that? And then it says, For Moses writes that the Lord's way of making a person right with the Most High requires obedience to all of his commands. But faith, but faith way of getting right with the Most High says, Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. Okay? And... Let's go to Galatians 3.24. Let me see what that say. Galatians 3.24. Look what this says on the top. Faith brings righteousness, right? But the law, the law and faith in Christ, all right? So we going we say Romans what um ten and four no Galatians three twenty four. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that and now that the faith and now that the way of faith has come. We no longer need the laws of our guardian, for you are all children of the Most High through faith in Christ, Yahweh And all who have been united with Yahweh and baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Okay? Galatians 3.24. And it says, Wherefore, the Lord was our schoolmaster to bring us up in, into Yahweh that we might be justified by faith. But it's still seeing they go hand in hand. And and let me hit show you that. Because they be like, oh, look at that. Nope. They go hand in hand. That's why I showed you the top. When it says, look. All the way to the top. When it says, faith brings all the way to the top, top. Faith brings righteousness. True indeed. The law and faith in Christ. Because they join hand in hand. I read that to you already. I just read that to you. So now let's go to Matthew 5 and 17. And we're going to end it with that. The laws of liberty. Matthew 5, 17. And this is straight from your house says mouth. So we don't want to hear another combative because you're not going against me. You're going against your house. Sir. Okay. And it says, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I come to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not even the smallest detail of the most High's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least of the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys the most high laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This is all about the laws of liberty. This is about applying the laws of liberty, which is the law, statute, and commandments to your life. With this, you can navigate to this dark world. Because um, in, in um, Psalms, it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, the shadows of death is America, okay? That's why it's hell out here. That's why it's hell in this situation. And the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. We got a lot of um, terrible, troublesome coming to us. 
that a man can't even imagine. Okay? And it's going to be more famine, more killings, more stabbing, more murders, more fires, more disasters, more food shortages, more everything. No love is going to be out here. Hate, violence, crime, murders. That's what was coming. And this is just a small little fire that's starting it. It's about to spread like a wildfire of demonic forces. Everything coming to here. And guess what? I ain't worried about it. Because long if I got Yahweh Bashem Yahweh side and I got the laws of liberty, which comes with faith, because if you have laws of liberty, you already manically believe in in, in, in Yahweh Shahu, people in England call Christ. They join hand in hand. This is the way. Walk you in it. The laws of liberty. Shalom.